like a window, no window. Look at the video, see the stuff that could be you. Because they like Don, 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 Don. And everybody on the East Coast calls me Don. I'm like, what is Don? My, my mom thought I was uh, on Long Island, but I was at Howard Homecoming. Are you ready? Turn it up. Let's go. I'm back. Welcome, everyone. You are now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonya on Air. I'm your host, Sonya hudson Payne. And how do I start off each and every single show? You guessed it, because nothing's changed. I have another great show for you. Coming up in just a few short moments, I have none other than Letitia Pearson. Now, if you don't know who she is, trust me, you will know after this conversation. Now, Letitia is a personality on Bell Collective, one of my favorite shows. One of my favorite shows. I stay tuned in. Now, if you don't know about Bell Collective, please go over to the Oprah Winfrey Network and make sure that you catch all of their airing times because this is season two and it follows African-American women bosses. CEOs in business as they navigate their businesses, their relationships with their men and their husbands, and also their friendships. And when I tell you, this is a breath of fresh air because I love to see how women are able to work through their challenges. But the focus of my conversation with Letitia will be about the evolution of a woman's love. It changes. It's different from when you are 19 and when you are 50. By the way, I just turned 50 a few weeks ago. Happy birthday to me. So that's what mother was doing. Mother was stepping into her 50s graciously. But before I tell you a little bit more about that, and before we bring Letitia onto this conversation, just a few quick housekeeping rules. Make sure that you subscribe. If I could do it in sign language, I do that too, because some of you act like you don't understand English or simple directions. Make sure that you subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you also hit that notification button. The notification button will let you know every time I upload an all new Sonya on Air celebrity interview. But don't stop there, children. Make sure that you go across every single platform, streaming platform that is, and subscribe to Sonya On Air there too, okay? So if you want to know where Sonya On Air is streaming, just go to the description section of this episode and you have it. But if you need me to do a little sign language, let me know that too, because some of y'all act like y'all don't hear me, okay? So like I told you all, I just turned 50 and fabulous. And I really stepped into a whole new season. They do, you know, I heard back in the day when I was back in the day, <laughs> child, I'm talking like an old lady already. When I was just a, a pretty young thing, no, 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 because I'm still a pretty young thing. But when I was, let's say, wet behind the ears, right? I always was told it gets greater later. And um, I'm starting to believe that. All of the questions that I had about life, about myself, about people, I'm starting to get the answers. My 40s, it was all about the questions and the questions and the concerns and is this right? But then, child, as the minutes, the hours, and the seconds started to approach my 50th birthday, it became so clear. One thing I really concluded on and it became clearer People are weird. People are weird, weird, weird. I don't know if it's just because of the pandemic or this is just the evolution of human beings, but it is getting very, very creepy, weird, and scary out in these streets. It really is. So my 50s, I ushered it in in peace, serenity. If you're following me on my um, social media, make sure you follow me on social media too. You can find me on Instagram at Sonya underscore on air. I'm also on Facebook under Sonya on air, but you can really catch me heavily on Instagram. And you know, another platform I keep telling y'all, mother is living her best life on TikTok. I told you last year, not even last year, it's been almost a year, but they've been working for me for me. Ugh, this is their fourth year. But almost one year ago, I transitioned my interns fully into more meaningful intern um, work, media work. And um, 
they told me to get on TikTok. So I am living my best life on TikTok. You can find me um, under Sonya Hudson, I believe. Okay, so join me over there on TikTok and um, stay out my DMs. Stay out my DMs. You know, I posted something on social media today, on, on Facebook, as a matter of fact, on my personal page, because there was a guy that I, I knew from way, way back in the day, right? And um, I was about to like his finger. I was about to press that button. Something said, bring it back. Bring it back. Because I just had a flashback. I said, darling, he's for the streets. We need to give him back to his mother's womb. And if she decides to birth him again, child, because he is meant for the dark, pissy alleyways. <laughs> the dark, pissy alleyways. So I had to retract my finger from that like button. Don't do it. I told you I am so self-assured at this point. There, there, There's no more questioning about who you are and what it is. Like you, you tell me and show me who you are, darling. I am going to believe it. I've lost quite a bit of people throughout my 40s. I would say my whole, you know, personal network of people because I, I woke up and I was just like, the trauma and the self-abuse I've in inflicted upon myself. So going back to my upcoming conversation with Leticia, if my research serves me correctly, she met her current husband when she was a teenager and she got married in her early 20s. I'm finding that that's a common story amongst women and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Because who you are in your late teens, early 20s, heck, your 30s, it's not who you are. When you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, years old it's not the same. Your heart evolves. Your mind evolves. Because what I know to be true, I've had, you know, some past relationships that were serious. Not a lot. Not a lot. Okay. But the few that I have had, I am so thankful, thankful that I didn't get married. Because who I was back then, darling, I was a whole, whole series on the Zeus Network, listen, <laughs> on BET After Dark. Oh, one after 9 p.m. I mean, I was just a lot to handle because I was still trying to figure myself out. And then just being born and raised in Brooklyn, you come with a whole personality that you didn't even ask for when you grew up in the streets of New York. A whole different personality. If you talk to anyone from New York City, ask them, what are the behavioral manner mannerisms or behavioral characteristics of people living in the boroughs? People living in Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens. In my mind, I was like, should I mention Staten Island? Because we really don't count Staten Islands, but I'm going to show y'all some love. Staten Island too. Long Island too, we really don't show you love, but I'm going to show you love today in Long Island. But when you ask about the different personalities that may represent in each of the varying New York City boroughs, every borough has a personality. And Brooklyn girls are really known for being a little rough, a little rough around the edges. I'm, I just started to soften those edges, polish those edges so that they aren't as sharp. Because darling, whoo, like I said, it was a lot. So I just wanted to know, like, what was the thought process back then and how has it evolved now, because that is her main storyline on Bell Collective. There are rumors of infidelity from her husband, um, an alleged child that he had by the mistress. That's a lot. The trauma, the trauma that women have to endure. So this show is really just in advocacy of women and the trauma that we face just in relationships alone. In relationships alone, we have to navigate through the trauma. And I just really want women to understand you are not alone at all. And, you know, women are just starting to believe the narrative that every man cheats and it's inevitable. And I just want to kind of 
demystify that stereotype because I don't want to believe that that's true. There was even a conversation saying that men are innately promiscuous, that they can't settle down with one woman. It's like they have this animalistic trait that just wants to allow them to kind of just put their seed everywhere. So I just want to have a meaningful conversation with Letitia, just, you know, unpack it all, but also go to my website. My website will give you all the information about me, upcoming shows, past shows. My website contains it all. And you can find my website at www.sanyaonair.net. And guess what, y'all? I just launched new apparel. I just launched new apparel. But see, if you are following me on social media, you will find out that I had a special 15% off of your apparel order. But by the time this airs, you missed it. The benefits are following Sonia on air and media aid. Okay. So it's not too late. I, I designed this. Well, I didn't design the sweatshirt, you know, but you know, the words on it. <laughs> Because I, I just want to make sure that people just do a whole bunch of this. I just want people to be silent. Silence. And let your aura, your energy, your clothing speak for you when you enter into the room. So the slogan that I have on the crew neck sweatshirts, you can get them in a amazing, it's a beautiful hunter green and uh seductive gray it is um that's not my enemy that's my hater let me tell you how that came about so i was talking about a business colleague right and the, the colleague was i was like i don't know like I, i'm just feeling a little off the synergy just is weird and i don't have questions but i have solutions i gotta moonwalk backwards because I was noticing that this colleague was telling me all of the wrong things that I should do. But meanwhile, I'm looking at their social media page and it was copying my style, everything, everything. So I was just like, D so the person I was talking to, cause I was like, they was like, so what's going on? I said, that's a, that's an enemy at this point. It was like, no, that's not your enemy. That's your hair. And I said, I love that. So for all of you, please get and rock my new crew neck sweatshirt that says that's not your enemy, that's your hater, because the hateration is real. The hateration is real. If you are bossed up every day working on bossing up even more, you got a slew of haters. I'm going to just tell you in case, you know, you, nobody told you, you have a slew of haters. Why not throw a little nice shade? You don't even have to say anything because bosses don't talk. We just do. So bosses like myself and like you will be rocking the new Sonya on air apparel. That's not my enemy. That's my hater. So let's take a few commercial breaks. And I'll be right back with Sonya on air. Stay tuned, but make sure you subscribe. I'll be right back. Klarna is now on Instacart. Glow up like a goddess with beauty essentials delivered in as fast as one hour. Pay later with Klarna. For my Sonya on air media lights, I'm offering $10 off your first Klarna purchase via Instacart. Here's how it works. Shop on Instacart and add items to your cart. Select Klarna as your payment method at checkout. Complete a quick verification on Klarna and voila, you're all set to go. Now this offer is only available up until September 24th, 2022. And make sure that you use the special Sanyo and Air code Klarna10. Happy shopping. Welcome back to Sanyo and Air. So during the commercial breaks, I know you were watching the commercial break because I had another exclusive deal with Instacart. 
Okay, so if you use Klarna at checkout, you also receive a special Sanya on air discount. The supermarket is super crowded. Like I told you, the world and the people in it are super weird. So even I'm just like, you know what? I just might as well have somebody do my shopping for me and bring me my groceries in as fast as one hour. You can shop using Instacart. Okay, so Letitia Pearson, she's going to be joining us in just a few short moments. If you're just tuning in, that is today's guest. I'm super excited. Letitia Pearson, she is a television personality that is on the Oprah Winfrey Network's hit series. This is season two, Bell Collective. Now, Bell Collective follows African-American women as they navigate their high power jobs. They're all bosses making major, major coin. OK, and they're navigating their relationships with their husbands and their friendships. And when you combine all of those things, it is a recipe for. What do you call it? What is that thing when you're on the plane? Turbulence. <laughs> I had a brain freeze just now. Why is it that when women are actively pursuing high-powered careers there's a heavy compromise in everything else but that relationships suffer and i'm talking about relationships with your friends relationships with your significant other because let me tell you where i am at this point in my life at 50 years old 50 and fabulous okay and i'm so serious the conversations that i want to have with individuals, people that I deem worthy of giving the title of friend to, if we're not talking about monetization and securing the bag, miss me. Miss, matter of fact, lose my number because all of the other conversations is just irrelevant. I'm at this point in my life where I just this is the, I don't I don't even want to bring it to a dark and gloomy place, you know, and just talking about what the where the finish line is. But I'm about just creating a legacy, like what will I leave behind? And those petty conversations about who don't like who and who did what. And I'm just really on the other end of the phone, like, so we're never going to talk about business at all. Oh, that's because you ain't in business. So. I got to leave. So a lot of my relationships have really, really changed. And I'm wondering if it's the same also for Letitia, because like I mentioned, her marriage is suffering and it is, it's painful as another woman to watch that on television, her go through it. Because when I tell you, you know, it's deep when you can see a, the pain in a woman's eyes, <laughs> child, you know, she hurting. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. But when it's in your eyes, that's the truth of it all. So just the evolution of a woman's love, who you are, who you were then is not who you are today. And I think everyone needs to understand, men, you need to understand that, that we evolve just like how you evolve. Honestly, I'm going to say something. I have a hard time not standing in my truth and just saying what I really want to say. And maybe I'll say this when Letitia joins, but because I've been following the show every episode since season one, what it looks like in their marriage is that she's evolved and grown at a different rate than he has. I wouldn't say there hasn't been any growth or evolution in him, but she's evolved more. She's a totally different person, totally different person. And I do know that if mates or partners in relationships and marriages, if they're not growing at the same rate, somebody's going to have some resentment. And when a woman is way more advanced in her career than her man, he's going to try to find some sort of emotional and mental support from the next chick. Where's the lie? Where's the lie? If you think I'm lying, comment. 
because we could talk about this all day long. You know, so they say, oh, you know, do whatever you can to please your man. I believe in 50-50. 50-50. Women are always expected to jump through hoops, go to work, come home, cook, talk on the mic, gag. Because he wants to feel as if, you know, you're choking because that boosts his self-esteem. I'm not with the shenanigans at all. Not with the shenanigans at all. Damn it, I'm even tired just talking about it. It's hard for a woman. They should have never even made that song. It's, it's hard on the, what? It's hard out here for a pimp. Nuh-uh-uh. It's hard out here for a woman. My brain is tired. My vagina tired. My ovaries tired. My mouth is tired. I'm just tired. And I don't mean T-I-R-E-D. I mean T-I-Y-E-D. I'm tired. <laughs> Let me tell you how I do I, what came up about how I do I'm tired. I've been drinking like Pedialyte every day just for energy. Get it, I'm telling you. So they you don't have to get the, the, the liquid form of Pedialyte anymore. They have it in powder form, and I walk around with it because I have such a busy yet productive work schedule. I need to make sure that my electrolytes are there because sometimes I, I can't eat until nine, 10 o'clock at night. I'm not drinking water the way that I should. And sometimes I'm feeling a little sluggish. So I need something to bring it back up. And then somebody wants to date. I can't. Let me tell you something. I was, I was trying to get to know this guy, right? Trying to get to know him. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. So once again, I had the moonwalk out of the picture. So then after a couple of months, he calls. And I was like, you know what? Let me just answer. Because I was feeling nice for that moment. So I answered. So homeboy is like, you miss me? I told you I'm from Brooklyn. So my response was, what do you think my response was? My media lights? That's my name for my sign you on air audience. You are my media lights. You know, I have to turn media in. That's when I am doing media work. But when I'm talking to my audience, you are my media lights. Because you light me up. You light up my life. I always got to sing a song. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, my response was, no, I don't miss you. And he was like, you're serious? And I said, yeah, I'm serious. Like, when have I ever lied? Like, I'm not going to feed you false truth so that you can think that it's okay to keep calling me because it's not. So we can have casual and cordial conversations, but as soon as you try to talk about something romantic, I'm going to hang up on you and then I'm going to block you. It's hard. It's hard. So I'm excited to talk to another woman about the evolution of love. Sonya is not taking it. <laughs> so, men, come correct. Come correct. And if you are involved with a woman, communicate what you want, what you need, grow together. And if you aren't growing together, pause and have a conversation about how you can grow together. Don't be stepping outside, looking for something else that you can't get with the woman that you committed yourself to. Tired of women being traumatized. Tired of women being traumatized. But Letitia's living her best life, though. Bossed up. So, without any further ado, let's bring in Letitia Pearson. Hi. There you go. Hi, Letitia. Ooh, oh, please. Oh, look me. It is storming, and I just got wet in the rain. It is storming here, but I could not. <laughs> like not do this interview <laughs> okay yes yes i said you know i'm chasing her down like she owed me child support <laughs> not child support girl listen <laughs> forgive me like i said i was in like rain stormy got out ran in the house super wet and i jumped right here so i'm sorry thank I you for having you. me Oh, no, let me tell you why I understand, because you make major boss moves, and I know the boss lifestyle, Woo! so I get it. 
Thank you for understanding. That's what I've been out doing. I'm a bail bondsman. So I've been out in the jail, bunny people out. So thank you in the rain, honey. Get my coins. Okay. <laughs> no problem. But I'm so excited to have a conversation with you. My daughter's eavesdropping in the background because I make her watch Bell Collective every single ah, week. Thank you. We've been tuned in since season one. Really? Oh yeah. my gosh. Thank oh, you. Yeah. This is why I've been chasing you down like you owe me child support. Girl, well, I'm here. Got this. Listen, and all. This is what you get, honey. Yes. <laughs> no problem. But wait a minute. Bell Collective, do they film that in Jackson, Mississippi? Yes. Uh huh. They do. So first, let's start. What's going on? What's the update with the contaminated water? How are you all navigating through that? First of all, it's just so sad. That is just like, this is a very sad time. And I mean, I mean, it's just terrible, honestly. And just to, I was out the other day at a local church. Um, I've teamed up, like I work with Mima. And I was out there giving out, you know, distributing water. And I was telling someone earlier that just the small things that we take for granted, like little things, the activity of our limbs, water, drinking water, clean water. One lady cried in my chest. I mean, she can't even brush her teeth. Like, so um, people are still giving out water. They're still donating. I mean, the community has been amazing. Um, they have opened. We're still, well, Jackson is still under um, a boil notice, boil water notice. So we're just hoping that everything is going to get worked out. So continue to keep us in your prayers. And I think you did say something or mention and, you know, sent your, your heartfelt um, love. So thank yeah. you for that. Of course, you know, and I'm really just trying to understand why, why that happens. And I know Jackson, Mississippi, the word Mississippi just brings back a whole lot of history yeah. and trauma. Do you think that what's currently going on in Jackson, Mississippi is attributed to racism? Um, I mean, yes, yes and no, I would say, I mean, you know, infrastructure, definitely. I do think that Mississippi is the last to get anything. And, yeah. you know, just Mississippi alone, I think that it has this stereotype and we can't erase our history. Mm -hmm. But that's why I love shows like Bell Collective yeah. that's able to showcase Mississippi in a different light yeah. and see that you do have women, my skin complexion, you know, mm -hmm. that's out here doing major things. Again, we can't erase our history, but it's our job to showcase in a different light. So yeah. I hope that that's helping people like you and our supporters around the world yes. to see more than just a Confederate flag yeah. swinging when they think of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful. Um, my maternal side, uh, they're in Pensacola, Florida. So I would always drive to like Biloxi, Mississippi. To yeah. <laughs> so I'm very, very familiar with the South because I spent all of my summers as a kid growing up in the South. And I was it's so just enlightened to see Mississippi being portrayed with phenomenal women such as yourself, because the world needs to see that. Mm -hmm. So you are doing an amazing job. So when did you find out that the show Bell Collective was greenlit for a second season? Oh my goodness. I can't remember it. I was actually getting ready to walk Joshua into school. I think we were having like open house. They were doing something and I was getting ready to walk him into um, school. And one of the executive, uh, uh, one of the executives over at Kingdom Rain called and was like, oh my gosh, congratulations. And I was like, wow, you know, just amazing. Just being in and from Mississippi and having this opportunity and to have this platform, I mean, it's amazing. I would have never in a million years, you know, even imagined that there is a show, Bell Collective. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for the platform. So when I found out, I was like, oh, my God, we get a chance <laughs> to inspire again yes. and to showcase Mississippi in a different light. Yes. And of course, girl, I have some girl drama. But yeah, the, the girl drama, like people always say, you know, when a group of women get together, it's inevitable. 
I want to change that narrative yeah. because I'm glad that you're showcasing some of that, those challenges, because you're also showing how you get through it. Yeah. And absolutely. we need to see how you get through it. So you ladies are doing an amazing job. Yeah. What type of feedback have you received, you know, after season one and now that season two is aired? Oh my gosh, like so many people, they were like, oh my gosh, we have been waiting on this. Like, yes. And just so many supporters, like really uh, just kept in contact with us throughout the season. I think even you, you kept up with Bell Collective and us after the season and just so many supporters like yourself, mm -hmm. the, the like feedback is amazing. And to know that there are so many people who are interested in our story, who are being inspired by a story. Girl, it's been crazy. I mean, I even at the local grocery store, it's like, yeah, the bells are back. And I'm like, thank you. You know, so it's been great. You know, you got the good and you have the bad, but we got to focus on the love, you exactly. know, and that's what keeps us going. Yeah, and it will continue to go on because, like I said, you know, I'm from a particular generation. I just turned 50 and I sit down. Oh, you look good, honey. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I, I'm so serious. I sit down every single week from season one and I watch it with my 27 year old daughter because oh, wow. what you ladies are doing, that generation needs to see. How do you navigate through being a boss? And your relationships with your friends and, you know, your partner or your husband, she needs to see those things because we need to pass the baton. So once again, hats off to you. Thank now, you. let's talk about the new additions to the show. Okay. They added more and more. The show is growing. So we saw in the first couple of episodes, you know, the turbulence between you and Aikisha. Mm -hmm. Where are you two now? Um, at the end, you said it, you said it best, you know, to change the stereotype that women can get along. And but I look at this whole anytime I'm around women, I genuinely love women. I genuinely support women. I've been empowering before it became a trend. Mm -hmm. So when you put a, a group of girls together, alpha boss women, our way or no way, it turns into like, I, I like to call it a weird sisterhood, mm -hmm. you know, and we are on a show and I love, I, I love all the ladies. I love Akeisha. I love what she's doing in her vision for Ferris Street. I just know I meet people where they are. So if you over there, I'm going over there. If you over here, then we're going to go over here. So it's just, I like to look at it like a sisterhood and I love these ladies, all of them. You know, I, I'm glad that you said that because once again, it's showing other females how to navigate through the turbulence. It's okay it's that okay. you disagree. It's okay. And a lot of television shows that, you know, showcase women of color, they don't show it like Bell Collective navigating mm -hmm. through the turbulence. All you see is the fighting and the fisticuffs and then episode two. <laughs> you know, that's it. So I, I'm so glad that um that the show and you ladies are are doing that. So, you know, what has been the highlight of season two for you? Oh, my gosh. The highlight of season two. Uh, oh, my gosh. I've been on an emotional roller coaster the entire season. Mm -hmm. As you, you've been watching, you've been seeing, I have been on an emotional roller coaster. So the highlight, honey, I would think just having some peace this season <laughs> in, in any way. Um, but definitely... Um, I would say just me growing as a person, me growing as a woman, me understanding that, you know, it's okay to do what's best for you. It's okay to set healthy boundaries. It's okay to be a mom, a boss, you know, um, a wife mm -hmm. and people will have to re respect that. Right. So the highlight for me, be me, like me, the transition that I'm in right now. And that I, I listen that's my highlight, honey. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, I'm my highlight, honey. But, you know, I was really thinking about what you and I were going to talk about. Of course, I'm a fan of the show, but I wanted to give more. I want my audience to really leave with a message. And what really resonated with me, like you just alluded to, was your growth. And I just want to talk about the evolution of a woman's love. Because who we were back then 
isn't who we are today. And we need to start letting the world understand the evolution of a woman's love. So I want to just talk about your relationship with your husband. How old were you when you two met? So when I met Glenn, I was 17. Mm-hmm. And it was 19. I, yeah, I was 17. And Glenn had just turned 18 that same year. Mm-hmm. So 17, 18 is when I um, met him. And that's just what it is. It's crazy. Like we met and my mom actually introduced me to Glenn. My mom, really? yes, my mom and my stepdad at that time, he was related to Glenn. That was Glenn's cousin. And wow. my mom moved with him, which was like 30 minutes from my where we were staying and I'm like it's nothing up here it's nothing to do it's da, 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 da. and my mom's husband at that time was like I have a cousin I think that <laughs> your daughter should meet him and they can go out to the local pizza hut right up the street and hang out. <laughs> he can show her around so I'm like okay and Glenn was playing he was at college he was that was his first year he was playing football in, uh, at a college uh-huh. so I kept missing him so one day my stepfather had at the time had uh, him Glenn to stay over because he used to cut all the um, boys hair in the neighborhood in the community. Glenn used to cut hair. Uh-huh. So get through school and stuff. So um, he was my stepfather at that time had him to stay over to cut my brother's hair. Uh-huh. But he was really giving me time to get there What's because he knew I was coming. Uh-huh. And I immediately when I walked in, I was like, oh, Ooh, look at you, Brown. Oh, that nigga. Oh, no, I mean that Negro chocolate. So I was like, oh God, this is what we doing up here. I didn't think there was nothing up here, honey. So anyway, to make a long story short, we exchanged numbers, and uh, it went like went from there. Glenn didn't call me for like three weeks or so, and I'm like, uh-huh. I was the girl. I was popular. And I thought, oh, why are you? Here? So I called him and we still remember the conversation. And I was like, do you know who this is? And he was like, yeah, Tisha. I'm like, why you ain't call me? He was like, because I knew you were going to call and ask me that. And it just like, we, clicked, it we went out and went to Pizza Hut. And then <laughs> went from there. He went to my prom with me and just went from wow. there. Mm-hmm. So from the time that you met, you know, you were late in your teenage years. Mm-hmm. How long were you dating before you got married? Okay, so... Five years. Okay. So that, that was 22. Had just turned 23. Now that's the part that I want to kind of focus on. And then we can go from there. Mm-hmm. At the age of 23, knowing what you know now, do you think that it was okay for you to be married at 23 when you were still just trying to know who you are? Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely not. I don't think that we just, I don't think that, I think we should have continued to date mm-hmm. a little longer just because like I said, but we, we were together from like 17, 23, like every day, all day, my best friend, you know, my parents, my grandfather, my mom, both of my pat, both of my uncles are pastors. My grandfather was like the head deacon. It was kind of like my grandfather, like, oh, y'all shacking. <laughs> That's what we not going to do, yeah. you know? And we were, we had an apartment. It mm-hmm. was, you know, it was good. And we, we did, we, we got married and, uh, it was just us for so right. for so long, and it's you know, and Joshua came along, of course, but it was us. So when I when you hear on the show or you hear me saying or Glenn saying like, where did we lose sight of us? Or this is my best friend. Literally, that was like we grew together. We didn't have a cushion. God was our cushion. We were cushions for other people, mm-hmm. but when when our backs were against the wall, we only had each other's back. So we grew together, you know what I mean? And that's just what it is. But if someone came up to me today and said, I'm 23 years old, you know, I'm 22 and um, I'm going to get married. I'm not going to not marriage. I believe in marriage. I think that it's beautiful. But I also understand that we have to understand that it's okay to be whole. Yes. It's okay to know who you are. Before marrying, getting into a marriage, it's okay 
to take your time. It's okay mm -hmm. to date. And you know, this was years ago. We're talking in 2000 and well, not we married in 2003 and we met in 1998, but it's, it's, it's okay to take your time yeah. and um, get to know you and who you are. Right. Because what happens a lot of times, we'll be around someone and we become our surroundings or yep. we'll lean on that person to tell us who we are. Mm -hmm. Like we'll lean on that person to tell us, tell us, you know, give us our identity. Right. So I guess now where I am in my life right now is I'm going back to a 20 year old woman. And I'm finding myself. I love me. I love who I am. Um, I There were so many things that I just missed out on when it comes to growth. And I'm not knocking Glenn. This has been, we right. have had a great experience at some parts, <laughs> you know, but it, it's okay to take your time. And now I'm like, you know what? Okay, I've been grown for a long time. My mind telling me I don't want age, but I'm like, girl. I'm telling my stylist, girl, don't put me in there. That's old fashioned. Right. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh -uh. it was like, uh, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that's what you want to look like. All right. But I mean, so that's the only advice that I give anybody. It's like, find out who you are, know who you are, so no one will tell you who you are. Yes. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that's a part of the conversation that young girls are never told. Mm -hmm. If I look back on my life, you know, just growing up as a kid, people were telling me, oh, you know, what type of boyfriend I should have, that I should be married by a certain age, what would be an appropriate marriage. Like my parents have been married. Well, my mother recently passed, but they were married mm -hmm. for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. You don't see that too often. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was in a serious relationship in my early 20s. And I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I never got married, even though it was going in that direction, because it wouldn't have lasted. Because mm. who I was back then is not who I am today. Yes. And because I know who I am now, I'm so capable of loving someone yes. the way that they deserve to be loved and receiving the love that I deserve to receive. So I'm glad that you are now taking time for yourself because some people never get to that point mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where they say, let me get back to me. So what are you finding out about yourself now that you've gotten back to yourself? Oh my gosh, so much. First of all, honey, I am amazing. Let's start there, okay? I yes. am amazing. I'm able to tap back into my creativity, you know, to do so many more things and just like parts of me that I suppressed mm -hmm. and not, and I'm not saying with Glenn, it was me taking on like the, me just trying to please everybody else except myself. Mm -hmm. And as women, I think that we get caught up in that. And that's just us as humans. Like we want to make sure everybody else is, they're doing okay. You're good. If you're good, I'm good. That sounds good. But deep inside, we're not good. Right. Oh, if you're happy, I'm happy. No, we got to stop saying that. Yeah, You know, we say that if you're happy, I'm happy. No, 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 no. Because th that's just to please someone else. So I'm able to just see the growth in me, the creativity, just me, the boss in me that, you know, the coming out, just the Tisha that I, you know, I'm, I'm more outspoken. I know you've, you've watched season one to season two. I'm not going to let nobody play with me. They got to stop playing with me. Don't okay? play with Don't me. Don't play with me. You know, and I think a lot of times women of empowerment or women like yourself, people will mistake that as weak. That's not the case. Most of the women that I know who are genuinely out here, and I said a lot, supporting other women, pouring into other women, they they from the struggle. Right. They from the savage. They are really doing this yeah. just to help someone else. And a lot of times you would take girls or anybody, men, who would be like, okay, well, that, that's a sign of weakness. This season here, I ain't letting nobody play with me. Not Glenn, not nobody. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still me and I'm still going to love you, but you're not going to play with me. I'm not going <laughs> to let nobody disrespect me. I'm just not with it. No, this is, this is, listen, no. And I don't know when you are betrayed by someone that you love, you, and you, and you read that person. Oh, nah, you yeah. ain't going to play with me. 
Okay. <laughs> but you know, what I've learned just speaking to different women, we all have some amount of trauma as it relates yeah. to men. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you unpack the trauma of your marriage so that you can be stronger, not only for yourself, but also for your son, Joshua? Mm-hmm. What's he doing? So again, I'm glad that's a great question. When it comes to Joshua, we don't, generational curses are real. Mm-hmm. Okay. Generational wealth is real. Right. Generational poverty is real. So what I'm saying to what I'm putting out to Joshua, because one day he's going to have a life. Yep. One day he's going to have a family. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't want him to think just because mommy is in a situation and she's allowing it that he's able to go over here and do this to his wife. Nor I, nor do I want him to be in a situation where he's like, it's okay to be treated badly. It's okay to be used. So I, he's looking at me like right now I am the blueprint. Glenn is the blueprint. And to be able to unpack those things, mm-hmm. I had to do what I'm doing. He, I want, I want him to be able to see it's okay for a black woman to be strong. Right. It's okay for her to be strong and understand and know her place in this world. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want my son, I'm not going to allow my son to be in situations to where he thinks that it's okay because he has a family to raise. He's a king. I'm raising a king. So mm-hmm. he has to go over there and treat his wife like a queen. But right. at the same time, I want him to understand his worth and his value and him not be disrespected. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to be in relationships where you guys are able to compromise. It's okay to be vulnerable. I want my son to be able to, that's something with Glenn that that, that we've talked about in counseling. I want Joshua to be, if you want to cry, baby, cry. Now you're not going to be around here just crying, but <laughs> I want you to be able <laughs> I want you to be able to be yourself and see me and see Glenn in in, in places. Well, they did what was best for them. So it's just a lot of different things now since I'm learning myself. And listen, to be honest, I'm still learning myself. I'm still in a transition. Yeah. Yeah. I just left last August. Mm. So this is not this is this is a work in progress. And I can see the changes in me already. I can see the changes in my son. I can see the change with Glenn. I can see everything. You Mm -hmm. know, I just changed my mindset and I'm unpacking it piece by piece. There's no blueprint. I just know what I want to feel, how I want to feel, what I will accept and what I won't accept. I get that. So do you have any idea of where you would like your destination to be as it relates to your marriage? Do you want to continue working on it or are you saying it's not going to work? I continue I, what, where I am right now. I was telling someone, one of my mentees earlier, um, I show up as water. Mm, you, you know what it. I mean? I show up as water and that's where I am now. I'm not forcing anything. I'm not trying to change anything. Where I am right now, the way I meditate and move through life, I am like water, okay? Mm. I'm like water. And I believe that's what what is meant to happen. I'm going to attract it. It's going to be summoned into my life, and it's going to flow. I don't want confusion. If I got to teach a man how to treat me, mm -mm, I'll get a puppy. So (laughs) I am done with that that stage of my life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm like water. We're going to continue doing what we're doing. And, and you'll see as the episodes continue to roll out. But I'm not forcing anything. I, I, I'm i not forcing anything. Anybody that's in my life, I'm allowing you to be in here because I want you to be in my life, not because I need you to be in my life. And mm-hmm. again, as you said, it is a privilege. Yes. It is a privilege. And that's what we miss the mark sometimes as women. It is a privilege mm-hmm. for you to be with me because the type of love that I have is rare. Hmm. You know what, Letitia, you just filled me up. You gave me everything that I needed because I love just being in the space of women who get it, Mm -hmm. who know their their worth and their value. And they still continue on the journey knowing (laughs) that the lessons, it ain't over yet. And you've even encouraged me in your last comment to move through this space like water. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, just allowing myself to move freely and to mm -hmm. take shape and form depending upon my circumstances. Yes. Still being flexible enough to yeah, move. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Now we got to move around. Yeah, but we're not going to stress ourselves out trying nope. to figure out the thoughts of nobody else. Nope. We have, you have a, you have a purpose and only you know what your purpose is. So you can't get tied up on nobody else's thoughts, what they think, yes. trying to change their thoughts, trying to make yes. them love you, trying to make them feel like you're worthy, trying to make this friend feel comfortable. No, those who get it, they get it. Those who want to support you, they support you. Those who want to love on you, they're going to love on you and they're going to understand. Yes. It is not our job to worry about what nobody else thinks. Nope. It is our job to continue on our purpose like you're doing with your amazing platform and your beautiful spirit, beautiful face. And we just going, honey, we water around here. I'll do oh, it. The rest of 2022, like, we just water, honey. We just water. <laughs> we you know water. I mean? yeah, you, have you ever noticed something to come up a, a leaf or something in water floats on. You acknowledge it and it'll float on away. If it's uh -huh. not for you, let it uh -huh. go. You know what I mean? If yes. it's for you, it's going to stick. That's just I what love it. What I want for myself and also my listeners, because we need more of that. Mm -hmm. Where can they get more of you? Mm -hmm. Or just empowering words, your, your spirit, your loving energy. Where mm -hmm. can they get that? How well, I offer one-on-one -on -one empowerment sessions with Letitia. Yeah, so they can go to my website, LaticiaPearson.com, and book it. I love talking to people. Um, I also uh, planning a brunch, <laughs> not a brawl, okay? <laughs> We're actually doing um, a brunch, but I'm I'm accessible. Like, just reach out. Um, like I said, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, empowerment with Letitia Pearson. That's on my website, um, info at LaticiaPearson at gmail.com if they have a question or anything, like, Listen, I'm here to serve. So wow. it is what it is. I, that's what I always say. I'm here to serve. Even before mm -hmm. every single show, I take a step back and I say, okay, God, I'm just allowing myself to be used mm -hmm. by you because this is, you know, your purpose and I'm just manifesting it. Yes. So, you know what? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. For your energy and your time. I fell in love with everything that you said. I will continue to support you as you mm -hmm. see on social media. You do. And with my daughter every single Saturday. No, it was it Friday? Friday. 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 Uh -huh. Tonight. Friday. Uh-huh. It's about Friday to go down night. again. And let me tell you something. If I miss it on Friday nights, you better believe I'm catching it on demand on yes. Saturday with my daughter because yes. she needs to see people like you, a Aww. reflection of her. Yeah. Thank you, Queen, for being who you are. Mm -hmm. Keep standing in your truth. God has you covered and protected. Yeah. And yeah. where you are going, yeah. oh my goodness, all I see is bright lights. Yes, yes. Okay? I receive Amen. it. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Thank you take you, care and you continue to be blessed. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was Thank an you. honor. Bye, bye, bye. baby. Bye. I love that conversation. I love talking to, I'm just a, 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 a woman's type of girl. A woman type of woman. Any woman who is speaking greatness and pouring greatness into other people, not just talking about it, but act actually doing it, I am here for it. So that was Letitia Pearson. Make sure that you catch her on Bell Collective, which airs every Friday evening on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Like I told you, it follows African-American women as they navigate their high, their high power jobs, their relationships with their husbands and their friends. This is something positive that you all need to see. When I look across the different networks, honestly, I'm just seeing a lot of ratchetness. Let's just call it what it is. And when it comes to a whole bunch of women being in the same room, it is always a recipe for arguing, fighting, dysfunction. But this show is really doing it differently. Not only are they showing you the challenges as they navigate through them, they're showing you how to successfully navigate through them. So this is why I really, really wanted Letitia on this show. And I was really hunting her down like she owed me child support because you all needed to hear from her. You all needed to feel her energy. So I hope that you are as full as I am. Um, once again, just make sure that you subscribe to Sonya Onir, which is streaming across every major platform. Make sure that you also visit my apparel line. I'm going to have the link in the description section of this episode. Um, what else? I'm going to also be launching information about 
um, the billboards that I have available in 51 cities across the United States. Um, and also, I'm, I want to work with you all. I really do. So if you want to advertise or promote your business here on Sonya On Air, just email me at Sonya at SonyaOnAir.net. Is there anything else that I want to say? No, but just continue to be fabulous and stay true to you. This has been an amazing conversation about the evolution of a woman's love. I hope once again that you leave this conversation just learning something a little bit more and adding something more special to the world. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Smooches out.